Hello, a great welcome to this presentation. Today, we will address a very important and interesting topic, lateral load analysis of piles using E-tabs based on PY curves. I presume that this presentation would be equally interesting to both the structural as well as geotechnical engineers. So let us start with the objective of this presentation. So the objective is to demonstrate the lateral load analysis of a single piles using E-tabs based on the PY curves. We know that E-tabs, it is not a geotechnical engineering software. It is basically a structural engineering software. So for the analysis, we have chosen the pile lateral load test data available to us, which is presented by Matlock way back in 1970. And this is intentionally done in order to have a direct comparison of analysis results with the test data results. So let us uh, discuss about the test details. Basically, the bilateral load test is done in a location, Lake Austin in Texas. Steel pipe pile is of diameter D equal to 319 mm with a wall thickness T of 12.8 millimeters. The pile length L that is measured from the ground level to the pile tip that is equal to 12.8 meters. And the soil at the test site is a slightly over consolidated clay with an averaged undrained shear strength which is found to be uniform across the depth. That is a CU is equal to 38.3 kilopascals. The water table level that is above ground surface. So we are we are uh, doing a test on a submerged clay deposit, and the submerged soil unit weight below the mud line that is a 10 kN per meter cube, and the strain level epsilon 50. This parameter is very important, and we will discuss in our future presentations, and which are uh, basically obtained from the triaxial tests. So the average value of a Psi 50, it is a 0 0.012 and many guidelines are available for us to select an appropriate value of this strain level and the load application above the ground line that is the lateral load P is applied at a height H from the ground line and this H for the test data it is 0 0.0635 meters. Fine. So uh, before we proceed with the analysis using E-tabs Based on PY curves, let me quickly tell you what this PY curve is all about. The PY curve method it is widely employed for calculating the response of piles subjected to lateral loads due to its ability to replicate the non-linear interaction between piles and soil. For example, you just consider the soil, the pile here, which is subjected to a set of loads, including the lateral loads. And for the analysis, the interaction between the pile and the soil at the various levels are being represented through the PY curves, where you will find that P is nothing but the lateral resistance at that particular depth, which is also commonly known as the soil reaction, and Y is the horizontal displacement corresponding to the load or the soil reaction of a P. Now, the basic concept of PY curve, therefore, is to establish the relationship between the soil reaction P. So P is the soil reaction or the soil resistance, horizontal resistance and the horizontal displacement Y of the pile at different depths. So we need to define the PY curves at different depths because we know that the soil resistance will vary across the depth of the pile. So we need to develop this PY curves across the depth of the pile for the lateral load analysis. So, for the present investigation, the PY curve model for clays under static loading developed by Matlock in 1970 is used. So, if you refer to the literature, you will find that the same model is also included in APA recommended practice 2 GO. So, here I would like to tell you that a number of models, PY curve models are available, readily available in the literature. Each has got its own advantages and a um, limitations and remember that the PY curve models are also developed soil specific. You will find a set of PY curve models for clays, 
then you will find a, a set of models for science like that. So here, as we have the bilateral loaded test conducted on a submerged clay, we are using the 90, the Matlock, the PY model that is developed in 1970. So remember that a detailed coverage of various models to predict PY curves will be addressed in future presentations because this presentation is just to, to tell you how to use the tabs based on the PY curves and the development of the PY curves using the various models will be discussed in uh, the future presentations. Okay, fine. So whenever we perform lateral load analysis using PY curves, a number of steps need to be followed. The step one, as you will see later, would be the computation of the ultimate lateral soil resistance. We are using the word ultimate at various depths. So the ultimate lateral soil resistance for this problem at various depths are calculated using the API clay PY curve model and they are given below. So as you can see that we have considered the various depths starting from zero up to the pile tip that is for a location of 12.8 meters. And as you can see that the ultimate lateral resistance is measured or computed at intervals of one meters that is at one meter, two meter, three meter, etc. So as you can see that for example at set degree zero that is at the mud line the ultimate resistance is 36.65 kN per meter. So please note down the unit. Per meter means it's a per meter length of the pile. And from zero and from zero meters, as we progress towards more deeper, you will find that the value of a PU increases linearly with the depth. And at a depth of 3.28 meters, you will find that the value of PU saturates at 110 meters. It does mean that we require here the value of PU to be calculated only at 4 depths 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And whatever PU is at 4 meters, as it is greater than this depth 3.8 meters, we have used the same value up to a depth of 12.8 meters. So this is the step 1 that is computing the value of PU, which is the ultimate lateral resistance at various depths. Okay, fine. Now we step on to the second stage that is the compilation of PY curves at various depths. Now in step one, we have evaluated the PY values at various depths. We shall use these values to compile or to develop the PY curves at various depths. And again here, for the development of PY curves, we have used the API clay PY curve model and the PY curves are presented below. Please remember the detailed procedure. It will take a lot, a lot of time to discuss. We'll address it in the subsequent presentations. Don't worry for the time being. So here, this, these are the set of PY curves that we have developed at the various depths. For example, here you can see that along the x-axis, we have got Y, that is nothing but the horizontal displacement and this is P is nothing but it's a soil reaction kilonewton per meter. Remember that these curves are compiled, developed at a specific depth. For example, coming to this blue curve, it is for the soil at a static to zero meters, whereas the top one, that is a PY curve at a static to one meters. And finally, we have at the top static to four meters. Now, in order to have a data comparison, for example, Suppose that we are considering the PY curve at a set equal to 2 meters. We know that the ultimate resistance maximum developed is 81.33. So let us see set equal to 2 meters. So here we find that as Y is increased, that is as the horizontal displacement at set equal to 2 meters is increased, we find that the corresponding soil reaction or the lateral resistance increases and it saturates at particular value of Y and you will find that Y is here is equal to, it is the same as 81.33. So it does mean that the PU values developed in step one will be used as an input data for step two for the compilation of PY curves at the various steps. Now, having developed the PY curves, now we are ready to proceed for our lateral load analysis using ETABS. Now, 
basically we know that etaps though it's a structural analysis software we are using it for the lateral load analysis for this presentation so in etaps we have done the following uh, modeling as well as the analysis of features so pile is modeled as a column element using linearly elastic material that is if we, for example we know that the pile is made up of steel so we have used the steel material for modeling the pile and is modeled as a column element and remember here we are not performing any kind of uh, a nonlinear analysis on the pile so we are we just want to obtain the soil resistance or we want to perform just a lateral load analysis and now how to transfer the py curves to the etaps model the py curves at a different depths these are modeled using multi linear elastic link elements for example if you see the on the right side this is a very simple 2d model made in etaps i am very sure that you will take hardly 15 to 20 minutes to make this model and to run the entire model you will take another say 15 minutes so with once the py curves are in your hands you hardly require another 30 minutes because a very simple 2d model and here you will find that this is the pile which is which has got a total length of 12.8 meters and the projects approximately i think that is 0.1 or 0.2 meters above the ground level and these are the link link elements the so called multi linear elastic link elements that is being modeled at various depths here it is modeled at an interval of 1 meter and these multi linear elastic link elements will be uh, developed using the py uh, data available with us at different levels and remember the link elements will require the inputs in the form of p versus y and here p is nothing but the it corresponds to p of our py curve and then the displacement y we have to again take from the y component of the py curve so it is a very easy procedure and from the analysis of the etaps what are the important parameters that we need to take the results include the pile height deflections and the bending moment variation along the pile length for an applied lateral load so let me quickly take you for say 10 seconds to the etaps model yes as you can see that this is my etaps model it's a very simple 2d model okay so as i already told you this is my pile and these are the multilinear links and for example if you want to see the results so suppose you want to see for example what would be the uh, diffraction or the deformation you can see that for this and i will say the okay and uh, here you can see you can readily obtain the diffraction ux is equal to 37.213 and for the supply lateral load suppose that if you want to obtain what will be the variation of the bending moment across the pile depth you can straight away go to the uh, bending moment diagram display it and you will find you just apply it and we are having the moment m3 apply it and uh, here you will have the bending moment diagram here for example at a depth of around say 2 meters you find that the bending moment is maximum at around 111 okay fine so let us uh, discuss about the results from etaps analysis okay see the very important part of this presentation is uh, how the results obtained from etaps analysis it matches well with the test results data because uh, we have got a test result data so that we can directly use for in order to uh, understand the validity of our analysis results so first we are going to investigate the pile free head deflections versus supply lateral loading this is the curve that we obtained from uh, the etaps analysis and as you can see that uh, this is the very famous the, the lateral load versus the pile head deflection curve and uh, this curve is very important because uh, for a given uh, uh, level of the pile height deflection we are in a position to take the allowable lateral loads from this curve for example you can see that if your permissible pile height deflection is uh, provided in the specifications 20 mm here you will find that the uh, lat lateral load to be used for the design that is of the order of uh, approximately say 55 kN so as you can see that uh, only a small portion of this curve is linear and uh, as expected the curve uh, is uh, uh, non linear and let us now straight away proceed for uh, a direct comparison of our uh, etaps results with the pilot test results so this is the same etaps uh, pile head deflection versus the lateral load test and this is the 
lateral load pile head deflection versus lateral load obtained from the test you will find that here there are two curves don't get confused and as is clearly shown over here the first one this is for the y so this this curve is used for the load versus displacement for example here let us see at a 60 the deformation is of the order of say for example say 23 mm here again 60 here again you will find that it's around 23 mm so i made a one to one correspondence and i found that the etaps results matches very well with the, my pilot test results now let me go to the next one wherein i will make a direct comparison of the uh, pile maximum bending moments so this plot shows me how the maximum bending moment along the pile shaft varies along the applied load levels these are the etaps results and this again the pilot test results and remember here we have to make the comparison with this curve because that is for the bending moment and for example here you will find that at a level of 60 we have got approximately say 75 kilonewton meter and here again 60 here you will find that we have got around say 75 kilonewton meter so this is the axis to be used because this is the axis for the moment and this axis for the deflection so here again we will find that there is a uh, very good matching with the ETAPS results with the pilot res test results and finally we will make one more comparison that is what would be the variation of the pile bending moment for an applied lateral load of P equal to 80.9 kiloton. remember this value corresponds to the actual pilot test conducted by Matlock so here the ETAP results has provided a bending moment variation as shown over here you will find that there is a small bending moment value at the soil level because the load is applied at some distance from the ground level and we will find that the bending moment almost vanishes at a depth of 7 meters and here also you will find that it vanishes at 7 meters and the, the variation is also almost similar and we will find that the maximum bending moment obtained from the ETAP result is of the order of say 110 kiloton meter which matches with the pilot test results. So, so now it is very clear for you how this pilot test results have helped us. It helped us to gain the confidence whether the ETAP results are acceptable. So I think that's all for this presentation. Thanks a lot. So please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And you, if you have any comments, queries or any suggestions for improvement, please let me know. That's all. Have a nice day.